In order to perform scrutiny of the voter lists and to take action, the authority of the nation's lawmaking, governance and jurisdiction is handed over to the Commander-in-Chief. The military in Myanmar takes over after detaining Aung San Suu Kyi and other democratically elected leaders. Hello, I'm Arnold Naidu and this is The Heat. Troops are patrolling the streets in Myanmar's major cities. The military takeover follows weeks of tension between the armed forces and the government after the government's parliamentary elections. The ruling National League for Democracy appeared to have won by a landslide, defeating the army-backed opposition. But military leaders cried foul, claiming election fraud. CGTN's Dusita Sakar has more from neighboring Thailand. For five years, Myanmar celebrated a return to quasi-democracy. In just 24 hours, a military takeover returns the country to full military rule. Civilian leaders were arrested, the internet was shut off, flights were stopped. It came following days of whispers of a threat of a military intervention. Those whispers became loud and clear on the morning the country's new parliament session was set to begin. It was meant to be the first session since the country's November 8th election, in which Aung San Suu Kyi's National League for Democracy, the country's leading civilian party, won 83 percent of the body's available seats. A result the military rejects as they declare a state of emergency for one year, after which a new general election will take place. Troops patrolling the streets as residents in Yangon, the country's largest city, rushed to stock up on food and other supplies. Commercial banks closed and long lines formed at ATMs. In neighboring Thailand, where more than 4 million people from Myanmar reside, news spread quickly. Concern, frustration, sadness, they gathered at their embassy. <laughs> I feel so sad. I cried when I heard the news. If the borders were open, I would go back to Myanmar right away. But it's closed because of COVID-19, so I came here to the embassy instead to support my country. Moments later, this. The police line up, ready to disperse the crowd. Protesters fight back. A violent crash ensues. Objects thrown, smoke bombs explode and confusion follows. Hundreds of activists and supporters of the NLD gathered outside the Myanmar embassy here in Bangkok, where things took a turn for the worse. As you can see behind me, police forces trying to push back the crowd to disperse the protesters. The protesters were seen to be throwing some type of projectile objects. We had a few explosions here, but right now it seems that the situation has calmed down as well. So it seems whatever happened in Myanmar is having an effect in neighboring Thailand. News of a military takeover was condemned by countries around the world. China calling for all parties to resolve their differences under the constitution and uphold stability. The White House threatening a response if civilian leaders aren't released. Singapore expressed its grave concern about the ongoing political situation in Myanmar. And that's because the military's move to seize control of Myanmar for one year is likely to have wide-ranging consequences around the world. Lusita Sao Kao, CGTN, Thailand. There is much to talk about. Let's get straight to our panel. Shindo Shu is the host of CGTN's Dialogue Weekend and a senior fellow with the Pangol Institution in Beijing. Saurabh Gupta is a senior Asia-Pacific specialist at the Institute for China-America Studies. Waka Udin is the Director General of the Arakan Rohingya Union, an umbrella group for Rohingya organizations around the world. And Tan Luin Hutan heads Voice of America's Burmese service. He left Myanmar back in 1988 after a crackdown on pro-democracy protests. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Luin, let me start with you. As I said, tensions have been running high for the past several weeks, but events have moved very quickly over the past few days. Aung San Suu Kyi is no longer in office, and the military have taken over. What are you hearing about what is going on in the country right now? Yeah, thank you very much uh, to be here. Uh, as you know, that uh, the rumor there has been a rumor uh, about uh, military takeover for a while since uh, November 8 election. 
So um, the military said that there will be a, there was a kind of a election fraud and uh, asking for that uh, independent commission to the investigate its claim. But uh, obviously that um, uh, the Aung San Suu Kyi government and a winning party rejected the claim. So finally, um, uh, it was um, a military takeover. But uh, the thing is that uh, um, military tried to legalize its move. As if uh, it is uh, according, uh, they are following that uh, kind of, uh, 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 they are protecting the constitutions and then uh, what they are doing is according to the constitution. That's why instead of the direct military coup, the vice presidents took that uh, helm like uh, as a temporary president and a president's uh, call for the security council meeting and then uh, transfer the, all the power to the commander in chief. So Myanmar is now back to the square and uh, back in uh, more than 30 years ago, back in uh, uh, military control now. Lewin, what are you hearing about the security situation on the streets of the country? Uh, we've been watching quite closely. So uh, there's a no uh, such as uh, kind of uh, demonstrations or protests inside Burma. Instead, there's a, a kind of a support rally organized by the pro-military. So uh, basically, uh, uh, the street in Burma is quite calm. It is mainly because of that uh, the, uh, uh, the, the NLD and the, uh, the, the leader, they didn't uh, actually, uh, what I call, plan or maybe they didn't uh, want the supporter to take the kind of a very rush response. So inside Burma is quite, uh, in that sense, uh, quite calm. There's no much, uh, no, uh, in that sense, uh, uh, street demonstration. Unlike, uh, the, as you see, that the neighboring country, like in Thailand, or maybe there will be in uh, Singapore and Korea, you will see a lot of demonstrations outside. But uh, in Burma, it is quite calm. Yeah, that's right. We just saw those pictures of those demonstrations in neighboring Thailand. Waka Yudin, you are a member of the Rohingya minority in uh, Myanmar, uh, most of whom have been uh, expelled from the country. What is your reading of what is happening in the country right now? Uh, what is happening in Myanmar is terrible. Uh, they are our hope uh, for democracy transition in Burma uh, with a gradual transition. Now, uh, uh, about the Rohingya community, Rohingya genocide, everything, we are very concerned. Uh, but, uh, you know, military has to, uh, this now new administration, military has to think which way they are going to go. Uh, military uh, was the architect, chief architect of Rohingya genocide, persecution, all that. But at the same time, military also has done repatriation twice, Rohingya refugees uh, from Bangladesh uh, in 1979 and 1992, uh, original homes, repatriation of Rohingya to original homes. So now with this military taking over, we, uh, uh, we, we hope that military will address this Rohingya issue directly by, um, through uh, uh, repatriation, implementation of the repatriation that Myanmar government had assigned. Right, Waka. Uh, you are saying that you hope the military will address the situation, although we do have a warning from the United Nations, which has warned that the situation could get worse for the 600,000 Rohingya who remain in Rakhine State right now. Does that concern you? It concerned me, but we still have to hope that military has done twice before. So I do want to be very pessimistic about this. Military can do a repatriation if it wanted to do. We know military is, uh, is the chief architect of that, but because it has done that twice before, why it cannot do it now? Uh, you know, Myanmar is a nation, is a country, a world community of nations. Uh, the same thing with ICJ, International Court of Justice. Yeah. Uh, Myanmar is the signatory of 1948 Genocide Convention. It is a country. It is not a government. It is not the ruler. So Myanmar has to to comply with how uh, with the with the with the ICJ uh, with the ICJ ruling as well as the genocide convention so regardless of who is in power they will have to honor what they have signed Myanmar has signed uh, 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 a uh, agreement agreement with Bangladesh for repatriation of Rohingya in 2017 late 2017 that uh, Rohingya will be repatriated yeah. to the 
original home. So that country has to honor the agreement, regardless of who is in power. Okay. Saurabh Gupta, what do you make of the military takeover? Given that the military played a key role in drawing up the uh, democracy constitution in the country, which also guarantees them 25% of seats uh, in the Myanmar parliament, um, so what do you make of what's happened and why now? Uh, the, why now is because uh, the parliament was due to meet and, 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 and a new government and a new, new parliamentary term was about to begin. And in that new parliamentary term, it was quite certain that uh, Ms. Suu Kyi would be pushing her agenda of constitutional reform as forward as she potentially could. Uh, remember, there is the, the military veto out here. Uh, in the first term in government, she had just ensured a committee to discuss constitutional reform was there, but she can't wait indefinitely. This is one of her key asks in terms of what she wants to do and what the people also would, would, would much prefer. And so, I mean, that was the main driver of, 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 of the timing of the coup. Uh, but the main reason for the coup, it's unfortunately, it's about people in government, but with immense power who are marginalized and cannot tolerate their, their marginalization. And with that, the means to, to subvert a constitution that they themselves have written. And this is very sad and very disappointing, frankly. Shindoshu, China must be watching these developments very, very closely. China is, of course, Myanmar's largest trading partner. China also has extensive oil and gas interests in Myanmar as well, uh, and is also involved in some of the country's major infrastructure projects under its Belt and Road Initiative. Uh, the Chinese leadership has also tried over the years to develop a close relationship with Aung San Suu Kyi. So how is Beijing viewing these developments? Well, uh, Beijing has enjoyed uh, uh, a friendly relationship uh, with both Aung San Suu Kyi uh, and NLD, the National League of Democracy, the ruling party, or used to be, and also the military. Uh, so for Beijing, uh, obviously, there are two issues. Uh, on one hand, um, you know, basically in a, a very brief statement, the Chinese government is hoping you know, everything happened or everything is going to happen will be constitutional, uh, it will be legal, uh, so nothing uh, happen now will not be illegal. And secondly, Beijing hopes that there will be stability or stability will be uh, resumed very soon. Um, but uh, obviously people are expecting uh, some kind of disruption, at least temporarily. But that's all right probably because if you look at the country's investment, the business environment or the projects, uh, because of the pandemic, uh, they are already uh, being affected to a large extent. Uh, so in that sense, uh, that's, you know, that's just the, uh, the situation it is. So hopefully one year later, uh, you know, things would, would, could resume. Uh, I agree with uh, actually Gupta's uh, analysis that, uh, you know, <laughs> over the past five years, uh, the NLD has been working with the military, you know, peacefully, largely peacefully. Uh, but, uh, you know, there's unease. There's all, uh, always this unease between the two sides. The military, which view themselves as the guardian of the nation, uh, about the direction, about the unity of the union, the territory, ter integrity of the union. So they cared a lot about the country's direction. And, uh, they, and also at the same time, they are seeing the NLD uh, led by Aung San Suu Kyi is uh, enjoying more and more support. And uh, they are trying to exercise more and more uh, power over the country's development. Uh, so there is a constitutional uh, amendment attempts, more than 100 uh, motions were basically made uh, last year alone to amend the constitution. Uh, the constitution gives the military a special status in this country's uh, uh, governance. Uh, so you can see there's unease, there's tension between the two sides and uh, you know with this recent election so it somehow uh, disrupted over there. Lewin, could you give us some idea of the relationship between the Myanmar military and Aung San Suu Kyi? Now, as we just had our other guest tell us a moment ago, uh, they have worked together for the last five years. And in fact, she came to their defense when the military was being criticized for expelling the Rohingya from Myanmar. So how did that relationship break down? I think that uh, the relation is being quite 
not that good in that sense in the past five years. Because uh, Aung San Suu Kyi came into the power with that uh, situation that 25% uh, of elected seats uh, controlled by the uh, military. And I know what she was hoping that is uh, 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 she would change the uh, constitutions and uh, try to attract uh, a few member of those uh, military parliamentary uh, military uh, representative. And so she tried to win at the beginning, but uh, the gap becomes uh, bigger and bigger. And then over the past year, of course, the, the relation or ten, uh, the, it, the tension has been quite uh, high and increased. So uh, by, the by the time that, um, what I call, uh, elections come in November, uh, uh, so it is very clear that uh, they can all work together. So military has been uh, pushing to, to uh, the, the people to support its uh, uh, the party it was backing, uh, USDP, and then uh, NLD uh, tried to uh, organize its campaign. It's a very very fierce what I call competition at right. the time. So uh, that was a kind of a high point. So by the time you know, the, the ugliest thing is that uh, the landslide victory of uh, Aung San Suu Kyi's uh, NLD uh, party. So. Uh, that to make uh, attach the hope of a military to maintain its control in the parliament. Yeah. And of, of, of course, it, is, it has become a little bit dull. And also at the same time, that the uh, chief of the military, uh, commander in chief, he is you now uh, over the age, you know, he's in a pension over age, and you know, all his future is not very certain. Yeah. He has to decide whether he joined the party with the military backup or or other uh, opposition party. But uh, that landslide victory suggests his hope to become a, uh, having a, to have a kind of high positions in a, uh, Burmese politics. So that okay. is a kind of a, a time or a point that the showdown came in. Right, Waka Yudin, as uh, Lewin just told us, this was a landslide victory by the NLD. They got more than 80% of the vote. There are reports from Myanmar which says that the military actually miscalculated here. They did not expect to lose and lose so badly. Uh, do you believe that to be the case? Were they just embarrassed by the extent of the loss? Oh, yes, definitely. Uh, they did not think that they will be losing to that extent. Uh, Aung San Suu Kyi uh, getting landslide victory. And now military, you know, uh, according to reports, uh, it, some military areas, even military loss. So this is uh, embarrassment and also is a policy issue. Uh, military did not like a lot of things what Aung San Suu Kyi was doing. Uh, I'll give you a perfect example, Rohingya issue, uh, Kofi Annan Commission coming to Myanmar, and military was not happy, that kind of thing. So basically, this is something, you know, I also think that Military was looking at the what's happened what took place in U.S. You know this this border fraud and and they thought oh this is the opportunity for us and you know they are talking about so much fraud military military could not prove where was the fraud fraud to, to taking place where was the irregularity taking place they are just simply blindly saying that their proxy party party U.S. Right. has so they, there is no ground for the military to come with this kind of excuse, but they are power hungry. You know, I was born and raised in Burma, Myanmar, Rakhine State. I've seen that coup, General Ne Wing's coup, you know, a military coup. I rest more, I, I spend most of my life under military rule. Yeah. They are power hungry. They all understand this power. So they are just looking for opportunity to grab the power. Uh, it is not as, as, as that of a big issue, huge issue that they're making that broke voter irregularities. Right, Sarab Gupta, let's look at uh, the response here in the United States. President Biden is saying that he will review sanctions on Myanmar and has ordered a review of the sanctions laws that were actually for, uh, put in place uh, during the earlier military rule in that country. Uh, and then he said it could be followed by what he termed appropriate actions. But re really, what options does the U.S. have right now? Sarab, can you hear me? Okay, I want to go back to Lewin. Lewin, I want to ask you about these uh, demonstrations that have been taking place in, in neighboring Thailand. We saw those pictures at the beginning of the show. Uh, pretty big crowds of demonstrators. So what can you tell us about those demonstrations? 
that's a uh, that's the biggest uh, migrant communities in the nearby in neighbor, uh, neighboring countries. Uh, Thailand, uh, they they are uh, uh, hosting a lot of uh, Burmese migrants uh, worker, and definitely um, uh, they came. They have a route. Uh, they came out in a kind of a poverty and and a kind of economic uh, sufferings from the country and then a. Basically, they want to see their own countries, you know, prosperities and uh, situations uh, okay. And at the same time, they have uh, their family back there. And uh, so now they feel that uh, probably inside Burma, as I said, that uh, uh, on the streets in, in, in Rangoon and inside Burma, uh, because of the uncertainty of the situations, uh, no much of the protest. So probably these people outside Burma, like in a neighboring country, like in Thailand, Malaysia, Singapore, uh, you and uh, Korea, where those all those migrant workers uh, there, and uh, there you will see more and more of those uh, demonstrations, especially outside of the Myanmar embassy and the respective capitals. Shinda Shu, uh, looking at more of the reaction here in the United States, uh, the situation in Myanmar was raised at the White House press briefing. Here's part of an exchange between a reporter and the White House press secretary. Let's listen. The statement the president just put out, mm -hmm. among other things, it says the United States is taking note of those who stand with the people of Burma in this difficult hour. Is that perhaps a message to China? I think it's a message to um, all countries in the region um, and uh, uh, countries who, um, you know, will be asked uh, to respond uh, or to consider what the appropriate response will be um, in reaction to uh, the events that have happened over the past couple of days. So, Shinda Shu, uh, China has, in fact, said that what is going on in Myanmar right now is a domestic situation that has to be resolved domestically by the people of Myanmar. But listening to that exchange there where that reporter asked, was this a message to China, uh, do you think it was a message to China? <laughs> well, obviously, you know, people would say, you know, uh, they are watching, like, what China would do, you know, whether China uh, is going to pressure any side, for example, the military. Uh, to restore uh, the country's uh, uh, situation over there. But I think China, you know, if you follow the official statement from China, basically China is still uh, trying to get more and more information about what happened and what's going to happen. Uh, for example, many people question, you know, what about one year later, whether the military is re bringing the country back to the military control or simply it's a temporary situation and then uh, there will be a rerun of the election, and then uh, the country will still be controlled by the civilian government. Right. Uh, so there's a lot to uh, you know to know. And mm -hmm. if you look at the response from other countries in the region, remember, uh, Myanmar is a key member of the ASEAN uh, mm -hmm. organization. Uh, if you look at the response from other members there, uh, you can see most people uh, are watching with some restraint and the people are trying to get more information because it's real early. It's hard yeah. to say what, uh, you know, the other countries, uh, you know, going to respond strongly to that. Right. So, Rob, I'm glad that you are back with us. I'm going to go back to that earlier question that I asked you about the uh, response here in the United States. President Biden has talked about reviewing sanctions against Myanmar, but uh, what are the options that the U.S. has? Uh, the options are primarily economic, not military, simply because many of the military sanctions are already imposed on the on the Burmese regime, the, the military regime, after its grotesque deeds in, in the Rohingya area. Uh, so the options, uh, Mr. Biden is not going to take this lying down. Uh, one of the key, key goals of the Obama administration had been to ensure that there would be a a democratic transition, and, and Ms. Aung San Suu Kyi had won the election. Only after she won the election were many of those economic sanctions removed. Uh, we're talking things like uh, GSP uh, and, and, and waiver of that JADA Act, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I'm afraid many of, the, if, if we have a continuation or not, or if we do not have clarity right. of the transition back to, to civilian rule, uh, we're going to see economic measures imposed on the Burmese administration. Lewin, the United Nations Special Rapporteur on Myanmar, uh, had this to say about the latest developments. Let's listen. The people of Myanmar have been through so much. They've lived under a brutal military regime for, for, for decades. Uh, they're going through a pandemic. Uh, they're struggling with the economy. 
Um, there's just so much that uh, the people of Myanmar uh, have had to go through. The very last thing that they need uh, is this. This is not uh, simply about a political leader or a political party. This is about um, an assault on a, uh, on a democracy, a growing democracy, and an assault on a people. So, Lewin, as you pointed out earlier on, things are calm in cities, on the streets around the country. Uh, so far, there have been no major demonstrations against the military inside Myanmar. Um, but do you think the generals who are now in charge could be sensitive to international pressure? Yes, um, uh, they will be. That's why they try so much uh, to, what I call, be seen uh, illegal. So they try to uh, say, uh, make it a point that uh, uh, they took the power mainly because of that. In need, be they were asked to trans uh, to control the situation according to the constitution. Blah blah blah. So this is the claim. But uh, the, the the point now is that uh, uh, at the beginning, when the, uh, the, the, the news about uh, the military takeover come out, uh, it was saying that uh, military wants to what I call uh, independent commission to investigate uh, so-called election fraud. But in the latest uh, uh, press release by the military itself, now saying that in the over the one year time period, they will hold a uh, flash election. That means that uh, it is a little bit of a kind of a, uh, a worrying situation come yeah. up in this, that statement. Because regardless of the in that sense, regardless of the investi independent election uh, investigation, uh, investigative commissions about the election fraud. Uh, it doesn't matter. So they will, they will hold that uh, fresh election. What they mean is, they will be in that sense, you know, throughout that uh, the, pre uh, the current uh, recent uh, right. election result. So that will be the kind of issue tomorrow in uh, United Nations uh, Security Council, I believe. Yeah. Because the, the special reporter uh, by the Secretary General mm -hmm. will uh, raise the issue at the Security Council tomorrow. So. That uh, talking about uh, fresh elections in a one-year period is, uh, I, can, I think, the main concern for the uh, international communities. And then uh, uh, the Burmese military leader right now mm -hmm. have to come up with, uh, actually, a uh, better explanation why they think and why they need to throw away right. the recent elections result and a need a fresh election. Okay, Waka Yudina, uh, I've only got about 30 seconds left, but I want to get your uh, view on this. Uh, as we just heard, the military is talking about taking power for a year, then there will be new elections. Uh, where do you see Aung San Suu Kyi in all of this? Uh, is her political career over, or will she make a comeback? Well, it depends uh, on the military. Military has a tradition of yeah. uh, keeping hanging to power for many years. Yeah. Uh, one year, is it guaranteed one year? Are they going to give up the power after mm -hmm. one year? Uh, after one year, they said they're going to have a whole election. Yeah. What if, uh, what if they lose again? Yeah. So this right. is this is uh, there's no end to it. Right. I believe military ha is uh, going to cling to power. They say one year, it could be ten years. Uh, I am not very optimistic that they will easily give up the power. Okay. Okay, that's where we have to leave it. Thanks to all of you for being with us. That's it for this edition of The Heat. I'm Arnand Naidu in Washington, D.C. Thanks for watching.